All right, if you take a look at the link that I put in the comment section of my original video uh, for VMSA 2021-0028 um, or uh, CVE 2021-44228, you'll notice that VMware has come over here and updated uh, that this process is now obsolete. They've released a different script. Um, and if you scroll down to the changes or the related information in the change log, you can see, so I posted the video on the 15th. And as of the 16th, they added this additional step. And then they've updated the script as well uh, on the 18th again. So now they've marked it as obsolete and combined the two steps that they had in this workaround into one script. So the process for this is pretty much going to be the same. We're going to download this new script or this new Python script, the log uh, vc underscore log 4j underscore mitigator dot py. Uh, it's a Python script. It'll run the full remediation process from start to finish. Um, so we can download this and run it. Now be aware that this does start and stop or, or uh, restart all of the services on your vCenter appliance. Uh, so if you're not ready for that, um, you need to plan for that. Uh, probably best done after hours. Um, we're going to try it on my own uh, vCenter appliance here. And I've had a couple of comments uh, as to how to take a snapshot of your vCenter appliance. Um, got, got a couple of new guys that have uh, you know, just started working with vCenter and VMware. And so this is my process and procedure for it. I will log into my host that has the vCenter appliance, which is my ACH-ESX02. And I'll find the instance and I'll right click it and I will do snapshot, take a snapshot, and then I'll give it a title before uh, log 4 j remediation, whatever you want to call it so that you understand what it is. Take your snapshot. Now that our snapshot has finished, we can continue. Uh, one thing to note is if you did come in and run this original script that I had talked about in my last video, or uh, I'm sorry, this original script that I talked about in my last video, and this particular script, uh, it's not necessary to run this mitigation script that we're going to run today uh, because you should be mitigated already. Um, this script basically combines these two pieces. I've downloaded uh, the VC underscore log 4J underscore mitigator script. Um, I don't know why VMware has all this in yellow. It's driving my <laughs> eyes batty. Uh, but pay attention over here. This is where you download the scripts. It's not actually in the body of the script. It kind of, or the body of the KB uh, took me for uh, a little bit of a loop there when I was first trying to figure it out uh, as to where I could get the script. So you can run this script once you copy it to your vCenter appliance and it's just going to give it a dry run which means it's not going to change anything it's just going to show you uh, if there's any vulnerable files that exist on your appliance. Um, recommend you do that first um, since this does uh, start and stop services on your appliance. And the vCenter or VMware even calls it out that uh, all the services will stop, files will be updated, um, and then it starts all the services. So be aware of that um, when you go to execute this. We need to copy our Python script over to our vCenter appliance. Uh, to do that, I showed you in my last video, we created this session. Uh, in case you're seeing this for the first time, let's go to Edit and Advanced. Under the SFP, FTP section here, uh, you want to uncheck this allow SCP fallback first and set the path for SFTP server to shell space forward slash USR forward slash libexec forward slash SFTP dash server and click OK. We can save that and now we can log in. already in the temp directory. Um, we want to copy over our VC underscore log 4J underscore mitigator script. Oh, not open it, just copy it over, just drag it over. And there we go. We can minimize that. And now we can launch PuTTY.
and SSH into our vCenter appliance. that big so you guys can see it and just like in the last video we need to do the shell dot set dash dash enable true command to enable the bash shell and then we'll type in shell to enter the bash shell there we go um, you can also do this from the management interface of your vCenter server so if you tack on port 5480 um, you'll get into the management interface and come over to access and you can see where bash shell says disabled. If I refresh this page, it should show enabled because we just ran that uh, script or that uh, command in our putty session. Um, and its default timeout is 59 minutes. Um, so additionally, you could come shut it off here as well or turn it on here. Uh, I find it just as easy to do from the command line um, since I'm already in there. We need to change directories to our TMP folder and then we can run our Python script as the dry with the dry run switch of dash R and it's going to run through and find all the vulnerable files. Now this script does take a little bit to run um, probably took about I don't know 10 15 minutes to actually complete once I didn't go through the dry run section so don't be alarmed if it takes your appliance a little while to run. Okay. So this is the list of vulnerable files here, and we're gonna we're gonna run it. Be mindful that this does stop the vCenter services, all the services on your appliance, and then it will start them back up once it's done remediating it. Uh, so we can remove the dash r switch, and hit enter. It's gonna ask you a service stop start is required to complete this operation. Continue, uh, yes, and it's gonna stop the services. It's going to run through its remediation, and then it's going to start the services back up. And this is where it, this is where it takes a little bit. You can see it's running through, uh, backing up and uh, modifying the uh, vulnerable files. And now it has completed its remediation, and it's starting the services up. Again, uh, this is where it does take a little bit of time. You can see that the remediation has uh, completed. And one thing to note that VMware does recommend is that we run through the script again with the dry run command just to verify there are no further vulnerable files. So you can arrow up and run the Python script again with the dash R switch, hit enter and it's going to run through and it should come back and say that there are no more vulnerable files. There we go. No vulnerable files found. Total found. Zero. So we are good. This has completed the uh, workaround remediation for this, uh, this KB uh, 870.81.